Welcome to the EBFC Show, the easier, better, for construction podcast. I'm your host, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. This show is all about the business of construction. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to have you join us on this beautiful Friday afternoon. Please let us know in the comments where you're calling in from. We're going to want to know. I'm going to hit you up and remind you a couple of times while people are starting to join in. Brittany is an incredible human being, an amazing person. I am so blessed and lucky to be able to call her as a friend, an inspiration, and definitely a change maker, motivator. And while, before I bring her on stage and just to keep embarrassing her, because I see her in the green room just having way too good of a time, I need you all to start getting into the comments right now and telling us where you're calling in from. And if you're watching this on the replay, you are absolutely encouraged to continue to comment, whether you're watching this on LinkedIn, YouTube, my peeps out on Twitch or Twitter, please do. And while you're thinking about that, one of the things to consider is that we put out a poll. Ladies and gentlemen, you asked and we listened. I'm going to add here and I'll bring Brittany on in just a second, but we asked, you know, what do you want to hear about? And it's overwhelmingly lean construction. So we're going to open up and start there. And uh, without further ado, welcome to the stage, Brittany Campbell Turner. Well, I cannot believe that it's taken me so long to get on the easier, better for construction podcast today. Uh, uh, and I am so delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it is long overdue. Thank you. Thank you, Felipe. <laughs> you are so very welcome. I, I'm glad to see we got uh, people popping in on the chat. Keep uh, bringing it in, people. We want to see where you're coming from all the way from beautiful golden state of california we're going as far east uh illinois so far buffalo grove in the house not too far from where you are in the beautiful state of wisconsin some more people from san jose and they're going to keep popping in so Brittany, while we get started what have you been up to recently like wh where have you been Ooh, okay so where am i i live in madison area in a little suburb called sun prairie wisconsin uh, and I've been here for a little over three years. So uh, I actually am from Chicagoland area just prior to moving to. Yes, yes. Oh, me too. Raise the roof. Hey, hey. Hey, uh, <laughs> neighbor. Yep. Shy town. Okay. So, but now I'm in Mad Town um, <laughs> and I'm enjoying my time here. Is Mad Town a thing? Mad Town is a thing. I'm going to have to call my buddy Scott Lawasser. Shout out to Scott. I'm going to confirm. He went to school in Madison to see if that's a thing, if it's not just a Britney thing. Definitely hear it on the radio. There's okay, that's, definitely that's, that's Madtown. Yes. That's real. Madtown. <laughs> and, the, and for those who know about Willie Street, yep, that's that's definitely the cool spot that takes you to the Capitol and all that goodness. So, so I've been hanging out here uh, and uh, ooh, had a life changing event. And, uh, it's a, it's a life changing event yeah, that many absolutely. people also have. So I'm not kind of like doing anything crazy. I didn't have to like go through surgery or anything like, well, I guess I did. I had a baby. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Brittany had a baby. Yes. Thank you. So for those of you who've been looking out for me and why haven't I been posting, I have been a little bit busy with a seven month old. <laughs> That's a, uh, when we talked on the phone and we do talk regularly, it was totally valid. And so not a surprise to us. And uh, I know what it's like to be a parent. And I told Brittany and she already said that I was right. So I just want to get it on the record. Can you tell everybody while we're recording this, what was I right about? That she, is the most amazing thing that happens in your life. Absolutely. <laughs> so one day I've got family. I've got a child. And uh, my son, I feel exactly the same way about you as Brittany does about her baby boy. And so super happy that that's happened. And what else have you been up to as if that's not enough? Oh, goodness. Okay. So in chronological order. Yeah, please. Okay. So whilst I was pregnant, um, I have become now the CEO of a company called Builder Chain. 
Uh, I did take maternity leave, so I'm just now getting back into the game. But um, it's an exciting opportunity for us to grow a software a suite of software um, that is going to support the construction community that's based on blockchain. So that's super exciting for me and my business partners. Um, my husband, Marcus Turner, shout out. Woo, woo. Shout out, Marcus. Um, yep, he yeah. is one of our business partners. And then Don Bowden, he is based uh -huh. in Memphis and he is amazing. He's been carrying the torch here while we're, <laughs> we're on parental leave here, but we're getting back into the swing of things and we have some exciting plans coming up. So that has happened since I've been a little bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been busy. So, like a good change maker, while she's bringing a new life into existence, she also just picks up becoming the CEO of a software company, <laughs> just because you didn't have enough going on. Which I absolutely love. So, I want to I want to remind everybody that we heard you and we we brought the poll, and literally this is a true story. Like if Brittany, can, she knows that when we get together, it's a lot of talking. I don't think we ever talk for less than an hour and probably we're averaging like to the two or three hour mark, but people want to hear some lean construction stories, Brittany. So let's give the people what they want. And if you've got something you can share uh, from an owner's perspective, especially when it comes to change, there's a lot of people listening that are fellow change makers looking for inspiration. And we're going to open it up to questions and answers at various times throughout the stream, including on the replay. So if you're watching this on the replay, Put your questions in. Brittany and I are going to be all over that. So, Brittany, what do you have to share about lean construction and change in an organization from an owner's perspective? It's where you've been for a minute. Absolutely. I mean, I had a small stint at a general contracting firm, um, and I'm a I'm a engineer by training. Um, Felipe is not the only engineer here. <laughs> Just not the only engineer on the yeah. call, for the record. No. no, and it's not just his name here. He, name here. He's also an <laughs> actual engineer by training, for sure. For sure. So, yep. So, uh, but I have been supporting as owner's rep for the majority of my career. <clears throat> and uh, I am in that role now. Um, I am working at an or owner organization. I'm working at an insurance company here in Wisconsin. And I will tell you, let me tell you the story about how I got introduced to lean construction. Do you want to hear it? I do. Okay. So I was working in Chicago at a few public agencies as a consultant. Uh, one major task I was in charge of was to be the schedule manager for all of the capital projects at this one public agency. And I calculated liquidated damages for Ouch. quite a bit of time. <laughs> so I was doing that and I had gotten familiar with an organization called AACE. What does it stand for? Yeah. I don't remember, but the end means cost engineers. Okay? okay. And essentially it's all the project controls stuff that you would ever want to know about that organization talks about it they were having a conference at my alma mater at iit and i said hey you know what why wouldn't i just join that i'm in the project control space i'm doing scheduling you know what could i possibly learn maybe something that could aid in my career now i had been looking for ways to advance myself in my career figuring out what's next for me just thinking about okay well can i get a license etc cetera, etc cetera. i went to this conference and there were two organizations who just stood out to me from the rest because of something they were talking about they talked about something called six week look aheads and last planner oh tell me more tell you more okay so I sat there with my mouth dropped open <laughs> when I heard that, <laughs> when I heard that there was an option to save time in construction schedules up to six weeks, if not earlier, if you simply had a conversation with the trades in a trailer, looking at the schedule, just going backwards from, okay, yep, what is the milestone that we're actually trying to achieve? And how can we just talk about a better way to get there? 
I was floored. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can I do this? How can I make this happen? How can I actually like have all of my team members, like, cause I wasn't a project manager at the time. I wanted to like infuse this information into my project manager so they understand it, host some meetings, da da da. Yeah. My boss was there. I said, why aren't we doing this? And he said, well, you know, uh, <laughs> He had he had some good reasoning. Don't get me wrong. When you work for a public agency, is it is very hard to influence change. It takes a long time. You have to convince a lot of people. But I had the bug. Yeah. Two of these organizations, I'll call them out: Skander and Turner Construction. They spoke about the same topic about how they save time, and I said, "Guess what? I'm doing. I'm calculating calculating liquidated damages for the majority of my time in this role." How can I eliminate that? I can literally just figure out this thing called lean and last planner and just stop doing this. Like that really terrible part of my job. So that was the beginning of it all for me. Wow, it's like a paradigm mind shift. And like and for people listening, like Brittany nailed it. It's a conversation. It's a it's a framework of conversations where you do it and you absolutely do save time. Like the bar is so low that you can improve your schedule by talking to the people that do the work that have a say and influence in the control. And so you heard in her story, she tried to talk to her boss and there's some systemic things that sometimes incentivize people to maintain the system that they have. So if you're out there change maker and you hear what she said, she said, I, got caught i caught the bug and she went to look further and learn more where did that take you to next yeah so interestingly enough i learned that a professor uh was actually teaching a lean construction class at my alma mater which i had graduated and not had the opportunity to take so i hunted her down i went back to you know iit and i said hey and I'll call her out, Dr. Cindy Menches. Oh, Cindy, friend yes. of mine. She's yes. been on the UFC show, people. Yes. So check, check out the out. episode. Yes, yes, she is very well versed. Yes, yes. That bug gets us all. Yes, Adam. Ooh, good to see you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I reached out to Cindy Menches, and she was one of the founding um, partners for the community of practice in Chicago. And she actually put me in touch with a few folks um, to just talk with them about how they're operating in their businesses. And I got suggestions for a number of books to read, including The Toyota Way, Two Second Lean, um, the book by Malcolm Goldratt, The Goal. The Goal. The Goal. <laughs> right at the same time we had it. Yes. And I devoured those books. Um, and then I wanted to do more. <laughs> I just said, I, this is not point, enough. But at this point where you're working, are you still in the same public entity calculating LDs while you're learning all this stuff? Uh, no, I had made a change. Oh. I decided, I decided I wanted to see if I could get a little bit more influence on individual product projects. And I pursued becoming a PM. Okay. So I did that and I switched to a different company, got hired at a, another consultancy firm, owner's rep, and I started down that path there. That's about when I met you, like just a little bit after that. Yeah. And so this is where our story weaves together. And for those of you that don't know, I've said it on many different shows, but I'm going to say it again because she's here. Brittany inspired this show. The EBFC show was heavily inspired with influence and encouragement from Brittany herself. So as I said in the comments on LinkedIn, I owe you for the inspiration and motivation to get started prior to that. And during that time, Brittany had this amazing podcast called Constructor. Yeah. And I've, I've listened to many shows and that's where I started learning about blockchain technology and construction was listening to your podcast and going deeper, which led to just a rabbit hole of information. We got a lot of people commenting on how they caught the bug <laughs> and drank the Kool-Aid. Absolutely. And the changes keep, kept, kept going and kept going. So, you know, now you're in an owner's 
side, is it different? Was the philosophy and approach different on the owner's rep side from where you were before? But you've and you're coming with all this baggage of like energy for lean, and and just I, I could get a sense like for people that don't know, like people that have this type of information and experiences, their energy is typically higher than like the everyday person. Like they have all these ideas. <laughs> And they like to cause trouble. So we call ourselves the change makers because we help to affect change. What was it like trying to implement changes in that organization as the owner side? Yeah, yeah. So when I was at this particular owner's rep, it was really good uh, because they were a UK based company. They are a UK based company. Right. And as you may or may not know in the audience, um, there are some public contracts that have requirements listed around lean principles. And I got very excited about that. Um, and I said, well, if there is already work that's happening in this organization that requires lean construction to be done, even if it's not done primarily in the US, I can take what we're learning in the UK and bring it over here. So I started going down that path and I got in touch with, um, oh goodness, I can't remember his name, Mark. Mark, um, who was supporting us in the UK on all our lean efforts to make sure that we were meeting all our contractual obligations. And it was like, it was really fun to connect with him. And I got a lot of resources from him, um, which was awesome. So I did that. And then simultaneously, I had linked up with um, LCI Right. Finally, I got, I became a member and I was like, let's figure out how to just get linked up with this beautiful community. And it just so happened to be that the Chicago um, Congress was coming up. And I said, you know what, I, if I can influence this Congress and the development of the program, I'm going to do that. So I did that and I got to meet some more amazing people um, simultaneously when all this is happening. So how did it look from an owner's perspective? You asked me that question. I did. Um, So while she's hesitating, right, <laughs> everybody watching, she's trying to filter, what can I say without being rude and what can I be honest with? So I'm just, I'm just filling in the, in the blank as a good show host, Brittany, we can't have radio silence. So I'm going to, I'm going to stall you some time while you think about how you want to craft that answer. And I just want to give a shout out to Miss Randall and saying you can only read so much. So we learned in our studying lean and then later teaching and implementing lean that learning it hands-on is the way. You'll retain about 10% of what you learn in a lecture style or read in a book. You'll retain another 20% when you engage with subject matter experts like Brittany did in her story. So now she's read something, she's connected with Mark in the UK, she's at now 30% proficiency, she's starting to implement things. And when you implement things, hands-on, mind, body, heart, spirit, everything, now you get to that 100% and you're on the path to mastery. So you can absolutely not read so much before you got to get your hands dirty and get in there and do it. So now I've stalled for you, Brittany. So what was your perspective of lean at this owner's rep consultancy? Yeah, so it's a very good question. Owners can be challenging. Um speaking as one who, who's <laughs> right my, as myself. And part of it is because they're established relationships. There's a lot of the organizations, at least that I was working for, uh, there was a mentality of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, very, very comfortable with what is. And the end goal was always the delivered space, the delivered construction, right? Like right. work in place. Culture becomes very secondary when that's your primary goal. Unless you're an organization that elevates culture internal to the organization, regardless of its construction, regardless of whatever it is that you do as a product or a service. And that is, that's overarching what I learned. However, what I was able to do is this. I was able to work with a few companies to start evaluating contracts. And I didn't start with the IFOA, the integrated form of agreement. I started with design build. 
I started with CM at Risk and I started doing education workshops. Um, I did it both internal at my consultancy firm and I did it also with our clients. Um, some took to it, some were interested, some were, some were not, and it was more of just the info share. So that was fun. Um, the other thing that I was able to do is implement Last Planner. We were doing um, a number of interior renovations at an organization, and um, fortunately this organization had really supported the idea of Lean and said, yep, we wanted to implement it, et cetera, et cetera. The contractor was on board and they said they were happy to support whatever the owner wanted to do and they did last planner so i got to see it i love that yep i i got to see it in real time got to participate got to ask those challenging questions got to you know hear from all of the trades and make sure that we were meeting our all my our milestones i also spoke to the to the owner influencers um, to make sure that their voices were heard in the process. And I think that's a big misconception from an owner standpoint, how much involvement you actually have to have when you choose to embark in a lean project, because your voice and your cascading of a vision is so important for the culture that you want to see on a project. Um, that I would say by far was the hardest thing to get that culture up and going if it didn't exist in the organization already. Um, and also on the way they were doing projects, it was it was very much a um, a learning curve for me because to me, the logic just made sense. Right. But then when you have to change people's behaviors, that was the part that was sort of the the learning curve for me. And at this point, you're already, you're years into your study and practice and your learning. I think this resonates with the question we have on the screen. This is for you all in the audience listening in tuning in live or on the on the replay what are you seeing or hearing that you want to learn more about so Brittany's touching on something that a lot of people have no idea unless you make friends with an owner's rep which i highly recommend you do just because they want something doesn't mean that the culture is in place to enable it and then once you know what that is how do you create that i get that question a lot we teach the Lean Construction Institute's target value delivery approach, which includes things like set-based design, last planner system production controls, choosing by advantages, A3 problem solving, and a slew of other lean tools and tactics in an effort to support a more transparent culture that is designed to create high-performing teams. But a lot of people don't know or have had the experiences with those tools or creating that type of culture because typical construction project culture is dog-eat-dog. I got to protect my slice of the pie because from the typical perspective, the size of the pie is fixed. And if we're all fighting for the same dollar, I'm trying to get as many coins out of that dollar as I can, if not the entire dollar. And sometimes the client is the one holding all the dollars and not letting it even pennies fall to the people that have got to go make it happen. And so I think that's interesting. Do you have any, any stories to share of conversations you might've had with people that's specific to the culture part because you were doing these training workshops. What kind of questions do people ask you when you're explaining these methods and setting this different type of culture? Yeah. What's the risk that we now as an owner hold? If <laughs> right. we, yeah, like that's the biggest question, right? Like no. what? Oh yeah, Adam. Okay. We'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get, uh, we'll get on the topic of blockchain in a bit. Okay. So um, hold on. you just stepped on a landmine. Sorry. Okay. So like, <laughs> That that question. So, from an owner's perspective, what's the risk? I was sitting in a in an owner's meeting recently where they're trying to do, they're trying to learn how to do, like a, a more collaborative contract. I'll just say a more collaborative contract. They're not sure if it's you know for them, design build is more collaborative, right? And we and those of you that know, that's not that collaborative as compared to like some other methods. But the the question they brought their lawyer, and they brought heads of procurement, and each person asked that risk question from their siloed perspective. And one person even said, traditionally, we survive and succeed by passing all the risk to the general contractor and the trades 
we like to do this so that we have no risk. And I said to the person, I asked some clarifying questions and we realized that that is a misconception. So how do you answer that question for, for clients in that workshop when they ask, how do we transfer the risk or what are we doing? Cause now it seems like the owner from their perception has more risk in this collaborative method. What do you say to that? Don't you want to manage your own risk? Like on the entirety of the project? <laughs> like don't want, don't you want to manage that? Because you have the keys to the car. You can drive it. If you put it in somebody else's hands, guess what? They can end up doing whatever they want. Yes. You can always stick it to them in court, but like, do you even want to get there? Oh, I love that. So yeah. Love that answer. You answer a question with the question and then you make them think you put them back on their feet. And, uh, for all the clients listening in the audience, you always own all the risk because it's your facility or your project. You cannot transfer risk. You can temporarily transfer some function of the risk, but the risk is always yours. And if you think otherwise message, DM me. And let's have a conversation. I'll happily get on the phone call to work through that, as I'm sure Brittany will too, having been on both sides of the fence. So I love that question. So let's let's remind ourselves what we have in the stream. So people in the audience listening on the live, we want to hear questions from you. We've already got one for blockchain. So we're almost tied uh, with the live Q&A, but the next place we want to go is DEI. And I think it's important to to hit that topic, especially because you're you've been thrust into this new leadership role, uh, guiding a company, in addition to all the other things you're doing, Brittany. So what uh, what can you spell out from your perspective? What does diversity, equity, inclusion mean for you, and why is it important? Something we should be talking about in 2022. Ooh, that's a loaded question. Super. Um, loaded. <laughs> and, then about, we'll, and then we'll get to Adam with this blockchain easy question. How, how about let's start here. When I chose to be in this industry, it was from the sheer desire of influencing space and how people can be most efficient, how they can be most functional and happy in their spaces. I had no idea I was walking to, into a landmine of cultural and I'm talking about primarily white male, primarily domineering, unfortunately, culture of construction. I had no idea that that was happening. I had no one in my family that right. is working in construction. My parents are educators. They came from the country, the beautiful country of Jamaica. And I had no history and understanding of what it looked like whatsoever. So. I was clueless. I walked in to my education thinking I'm just interested in engineering. And when I looked at the makeup of my class, I was maybe one of two people to, uh, I was, okay. So my school was a little bit different because we had a very international school based in the city of Chicago, but I was one of two black women. Okay. But very few minorities in the class, most of them international. Okay, not American minorities. Okay. Right. And I was one of maybe five women. Okay, and we have very small classes at IIT. So that started to paint the picture had still had no clue. Okay. <laughs> when I walked into the workforce, I finally started to understand there is this tension that lives bet lives between those who have the ability to influence decision and those who don't. And unfortunately, the demographics, a yeah. uh, unfortunate, well, or should I say, bop, bop, <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, the, the makeup of those who are, have the influence and those who don't, you can easily see what demographics they fall into. Okay. So I had even in public work, uh, where minorities and small business owners, they're encouraged to participate in public work. Um, I still saw that. And I had 
introductions to people swinging their weight because I was young, because I had, I thought I had good ideas and was excited about them um, because, because I'm a woman, because I'm black, because of all those reasons, and maybe just because they wanted to swing their weight too, I got shut down. I got shut down multiple times and I saw it happen to very many other people. Um, so why is DEI important? Why does it matter this day and age? Why do I care about it and what am I doing about it? Um, it's important, particularly in this conversation of lean. If you care about collaboration, if you care about truly working together as a team, and you talked about high performing teams, that's key. You really truly need to value what people bring to the table. And you have to put aside your biases. And that's a hard thing to do. But you have to put it aside in order to really truly value what people can actually make the project better for, right? Like there's, it's not just that they can do a job, they do it proficiently, right? Like that's the small stuff. It's literally you can make this project that much better because you're coming to it from a different perspective. I can't cite the sources, but there are many that talk about how if you have a diverse team, you have a more successful company, it actually impacts the bottom line. Okay. Yep. Double digit uh, percentage change to profitability, employee engagement. And this, these are statistics that are very well known. I mean, in the United States alone, employee engagement is less than 70%. That means only a third of your employees or less are engaged in the workforce for a myriad of reasons. And some of it, diversity, equity, inclusion goes beyond skin color. It goes often beyond gender. And like Brittany alluded to, it sometimes could just be people in positions of power being culturally from one place. And you can even see it inside of a city where you'll have segregation of different reasons. It could be socioeconomic. I mean, there's so many different variables as to where this happens. When you start to classify and discern differences among human beings. And what Brittany's saying is this is something that I've experienced in my career repeatedly. And she's being very calculating and smart with your language. And for some of us, this is a charged issue because the, the types of things that you experience sometimes can be very subtle. And I hear a lot in this, in these types of conversations, Brittany, that people have these experiences where, you know, somebody does something or says something or discounts you or discredits you, or even rephrases what you say because of whatever reason, you know, you're just not like the rest of us. And that is what people call or consider a microaggression, or I like the analogy of being killed, because I, I too have been had the benefit of being in lawsuits in my construction career. And this concept of this legal, it's a legal concept of death by a thousand cuts. Eventually, you will bleed to death. Eventually, your people will disengage. Eventually, people will stop making recommendations, and they'll just do the minimum because they are disincentivized to bring their whole self to work. And the people that do this, like it affects you. Like people that are, that are doing this, like Brittany said, like putting your biases aside is not easy. And we understand that. And people are not looking to flip a switch and just have like everybody just be perfect and equal. Your experiences matter, but recognize your biases and you can absolutely do better when you collaborate for high performance, everybody can win. The pie is not fixed. It's not, it's an infinite pie. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no box. There's no box anymore. Like eliminate the box that you're inside. Like sky is not the limit. It's above the sky, like outer space. Next outer universe. Space, and we can go deep into the core of the earth. Like we can okay. go up and down, right? Up and down. Let's Damn. go. Look, hey. Okay. So what ha what am I doing about it? All right. Well, no, you said something. Let me let me backtrack. You said killed. Okay. Yes. Let's get serious for a moment here. Like in July, and I know you've done topics 
like this as well, uh, Felipe. And I'm so grateful for you raising this conversation, being a leader, being a change maker in this conversation. But in July, fortunately, I was invited to a conversation, um, a panel discussion hosted by LCI. Um, Sean Greystone invited me. And we were talking about mental health. And if you don't know this already, this statistic just floored me. But in construction, suicides wait, suicide rates are three times the national average. Just think about that for a moment. Yeah, that's the system we're in, people. You're you're in an environment where statistically you have a five times more likely chance of dying on a construction project by your own hand than by dying by an accident because of the type of dangerous construction that we do. So safety is safety still, yes, a high concern, but mental health because people aren't feeling valued. Now, mind you, maybe not all of that is caused by work environments. Perhaps there are anomalies there. I'm acknowledging that. However, if you segment out this industry and evaluate that alone, imagining that it could be caused by construction, the environment, the, the way we do business, I, I had to do something about it. And so I am. Um, I was invited to, I don't have the time, I have a seven month old. I don't, I, but I'm so charged to do something about it. I have fortunately been able to join um, a beautiful group of people here. We're just assembling, but the LCI has, uh, the Lean Construction Institute um, has invited a few of us to start uh, a committee and we're calling it Respect for People. Okay, if you look at Felipe's shirt, you see it says respect people. Right there. Yeah, look at that. Construction. Yeah, I don't Continuous know. Continuous improvement, mean. respect for people right on top. Okay, that. respect for people comes first. That's and right. There's a reason, right? Like the, the first tenet of lean, okay? If you acknowledge that for construction alone, like we can do so much. And I, I see DEI right up under that umbrella, right? It's It's co-mingled so closely because it truly is just valuing a person for their whole self and what yes. they bring okay it has nothing to do with you know like are you are you black are you white are you asian like it doesn't matter like literally what can you bring to this to this life like it could be as simple as your laugh right that can yeah. just change the way a trailer lights up like the way you start a meeting, you could choose to do it in a very, you know, kind of demure way. Like, I don't want to be here because you've been stepped on in another conversation. Yeah. And guess what does that do? It's a trickle down. It's a domino effect. Okay? You see it all the time, Brittany. You go, we visit projects and we engage and we go to conferences and you see the people that can speak and that can't. And the can't is because it's conditioned. Every child I know that grows up starts with screaming and making noise, right? Just like my child is in the background. Hopefully y'all can't hear. <laughs> no, that microphone is so good. We can't hear him. We can't hear him. <laughs> so, so good. And, and through a series of conditioning, you learn the culture that you come up in. And then when you enter the workforce, it's no different. And we are here as evidence in front of you that, each of you has a voice and we want to hear it. Change makers around the world, we want to hear your voices every day in your way, in the way that you feel safe and comfortable and understand that you're part of this human tribe and we're all welcome to the change maker tribe. It's always policy is wide open. Anybody can be a change maker and you've got friends, you're not alone. And for the people that are struggling with mental health, and suicide, if you're contemplating that, we are here for you and there are resources for you. I will be sure to add to the comments of this video, there are free resources for you to connect with. And I myself, Brittany, having joined the Bolt Company, have become a gatekeeper, which means I've been trained to be a good listener and to do positive interventions 
with people that are having a mental health crisis issue or just a bad shitty day. <laughs> like yeah. even yeah. that, if you need someone to talk to, we are trained to listen and not to provide solutions, but to help and to make human connections, which is so important. Yeah. Thank you for, for plugging that in there, Felipe. And I hope, I hope that, um, People acknowledge the the help that we're we're trying to provide. Um, one yourself, who's a trained um, person to listen, but also LCI. Whilst we're just now getting assembled, one of our goals is to create a platform where people can raise their concerns, um, speak about challenges that they're having, um, also have a plethora of access to resources about how to deal with particular situations. Uh, very much in the making, um, but we are very much looking towards um, having a different kind of set of resources available that focus on respect for people um, more than it ever has before. Absolutely. So. And I want to plug uh, Skill Signal has partnered with Princeton University and they became members of a, a, a joint task force with the mental health initiative. And we've done a video on our YouTube channel uh, promoting that and also share that on social media. If you go to skillsignal.com on the top right, they've got free construction resources and two forms that you can submit ideas in a collection and they're making all of that information public. So I highly recommend <coughs> LCI speakers out there, including Brittany representing on that uh, respect council. There are organizations partnered with education that are already collecting enormous amounts of intervention, tips, techniques, online things for people to consume, and they're making it widely available to everybody. This is something that is so complex and so big that affects so many people. We've got to put our silos, just lower the walls down or just make some windows and reach our hands out and connect across these different initiatives trying to do the same thing. There are several, and I even got a, a message from uh, Cabri via LinkedIn, and she was sharing. She does a psychological safety talk based on her work and volunteering in this type of area as well. Shout out to Cabri. Thank you for sharing that stuff with me. And I, I submitted it to a Skill Signal site to add to the collection some work from a psychologist on the West Coast. I mean, there's people from coast to coast and around the planet working on this issue. And so all of us, like it's as easy as listening to people. And if, if you don't feel comfortable, you can always find somebody that does feel comfortable to be that listener. You can't absolutely save a life and make a difference for somebody. You just got to be your human self. Like Brittany said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for all the work that you're doing, Felipe as well i mean this is this is an enormous effort and no one group can do it by themselves it has to be a partnership it has to be again looking through that lens of who can be a listening ear and who how do you show up so that you can feel comfortable right like it's it's the person that needs to be receiving that um, information or that, that perspective, right, from the person who's going through it. And then there's a person who needs to share. There's an accountability on both ends. And if we can show up and do both sides and organize and provide resources in order for people to understand how best to do it, hands down, we're going to make a shift. Yeah, so I, I charge, I charge everyone who's listening, follow the resources that Felipe is suggesting because LC has not stood up yet. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to be partnering with AGC, with COA. We already have discussions in the works um, and making sure that we have um, have something to, to just move the, the needle here, given that's everything that's happening in the world right now. Absolutely. And, and you know, speaking of the world and connecting, I want to, I want to remind everybody that, uh, you know, we are, we are live and you can ask uh, if you got more, more questions. We're going to open it up for Q and A in just a minute, but we're going to go as promised to the topic that we have to cover. Topic number three: blockchain. 
And then we're going to jump, we'll dive into these comments and thank you all for, for voting and engaging with, with us on social media. We absolutely appreciate that. And that's probably the best way to get a hold of us at times because we've got, uh, we're out there in the world, but I want to ask you now to tell people that maybe don't know what's just basic blockchain and construction. What is it? Yeah. So for those of you who don't realize what blockchain is, I'll just quickly, <laughs> quickly go through. Blockchain is a shared digital book, uh, digital record book of transactions. That's all it is. And I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, it has something to do with, you know, digital um, currency. Yes, a lot of blockchains do have to do with digital currency. And I am a currency owner, and I think there's much value in that. However, when you just simply look at it from a very high level standpoint of shared digital book of transactions, imagine how many transactions you go through in a day digitally. Okay, wake up in the morning, get on your phone, do whatever it is that you do. If you do an exchange of information, maybe an email, okay? That's simple, an exchange of information. You shared information over an email. I mean, it could be an application like, I don't know, social media. <laughs> You're sharing text, right? Like if you have a channel where you only want one person to receive that text, and you want it to be confirmed and verified and you want it to be secure. Think about blockchain. Blockchain enables that. So that's why digital currency is a great thing to do on blockchain because it's very, it allows for that logic to take place. It solved the double spend, pro the double spend problem. That's why people got really excited about blockchain in the first place. But if you think about it, it solves the double transaction problem as well the double exchange of information problem and it eliminates redundancies. Okay, so bring that all the way back up, scale it up, okay, construction. Yes. Okay. Imagine how many times we share the same piece of information to the same people over and over and over again, whether it be an RFI, a change order, information that we already shared during a contract, ex like actual exchange back and forth, agreeing on terms, and then now you gotta share it in a different, okay. There's so many ways we share information, duplicative information. So what, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for, as far as what we're working on? Um, we're actually working on a product called Builder Pay. And Builder Pay is exactly <laughs> what I've just been talking about. <laughs> Tying exactly the task, that specific work that's happening on, on site, that work in progress task, that typically you just want to go ahead and get paid for once it's done, tying verification of approvals to a transaction of actual payment that can be approved within 24 hours of the work being completed. Doesn't mean that you get paid at that time, but it can approve it and release payment within 24 hours. If the owner of the transactions puts the logic, puts the actual coding in place in order to be released at that time. What does that do for construction? It significantly speeds up the transaction speeds. Do you know that average is 90 days for payment? <laughs> I know it's like, it's so sad that that's the average. That means that there's, there's stuff even beyond that, which is in my opinion, unacceptable. I do not like for small companies or even large companies to have to finance at the expense of somebody's ridiculous payment terms and i just don't have any other words for it yeah. especially when you see small people and we have friends that that this exact thing has resulted in loss of life with businesses going upside down and families being split apart because of this type of practice which i just consider predatory yeah. in our industry so i am very glad at the type of work you're doing it's my turn to applaud you for making a difference because this is something that affects so many trade contractors and affects every single employee in that supply chain from people working at and manufacturing all the way to people on site on the project, delivering that building for the clients that are listening to this. When you provide services, you don't want to be waiting for your money. You want to receive revenue at the moment that services are provided and stop treating construction like it's your personal 
finance lending bank account. It's not. These are real people that are impacted by this. So I'm very glad that that's happening. I even heard some statistics that in some subcontractor spaces, the financing that they have to secure in order to stay cash positive on a project because of these terrible predatory practices with payments, they can be paying finance charges in double digit percentage, sometimes even excess of 60%, which I cannot imagine how somebody can stay profitable paying 60% finance charges on work that's happening sometimes in the span of weeks to months. It doesn't even make any kind of sense just how wrong that is. I can think of almost nothing more wrong than that besides the mental health crisis we just talked about. Well, they're all, all go hand in hand, right? Like, so when we talk about all these different topics, for me, they're 100% intertwined. Okay. So let's quickly go back to like, what you just said about mental health, right? You're preventing folks from getting food on their table. We're managing fiduciary funds. The funds that have been deployed for a particular project, they're the only funds that should be spent on that project and they should not be spent on other projects. With blockchain, you have the ability to put the funds that you need to spend on that project in escrow whatever you want to call it. It's in a, it is in a fund, right? And you're able to track every dollar that's spent and confirm without a doubt exactly how it's spent and ensure that it's, it's done the exact way it should be. Okay. I know having worked in many different scenarios, particular contractors that have had to pay for other projects using other project money <laughs> because they have not been able to get paid on time by the organizations that have committed to 30 day or 40 day, 45 day payment cycles, whatever they are. And they've had to figure out a way to keep their business afloat. That's a problem. And yeah. what, what happens? Okay. Back to DEI. Many times there's small business owners, minority business own, women business own, own uh, contracting firms, suppliers, Etc. Subcontractors, trade partners, right? Like designers, design. desi- like right. It's it's they just don't have enough capital to manage, and these are people just trying to make a living and provide a service for people. And guess what? Ultimately, care about their families, care about whatever it is that's important to them. Ultimately, their survival, right? right. And so, when I think about respect for people, right, it comes back to how do you simply just like respect the person that you're working with, pay them on time. Just pay them on time. If you can set up a way for someone to have the right documentation clean when they submit it to you by simply the way they enter it to like put your G702, G703s together, (laughs) all the lien waivers, like literally, like that's very simple to do using a software. If you tell a software to do something, guess what? It's going to do it. <laughs> it's like, error checks it automatically so they can't fail to submit it correctly. Yes. I absolutely love that. So with all those, all that blockchain knowledge you dropped on us, and I love how you tie it back to respect for people. That's one of the things when Brittany and I were planning this live, we said it's all about respect for people. And so that's from our perspective. We're so aligned on that thing. So I want to just give a quick plug back to the people in the audience. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And again, you know, we heard what you said and we've got you, we've got, uh, in the Q and a people in the survey responded. We've got one question that came out here. Let me bring it up here from my buddy, Mr. Doug Doolin. And he said, Brittany, what help do you need on your job site to make it safe, productive, and fun? Shout out to Doug. My lean brother from another mother. So this one, I'm going to let you, I'll leave that on the screen for you, Brittany, while you start to kick out that answer. Yeah. You know, as an owner's rep. Okay. So I'll tell you from my perspective, because at the end of the day, I am not in charge of means and methods, but I can always influence. Okay. So I, when I talk about job site to make it fun, all the time, I'm looking for ways to celebrate the folks that are working on the project. Um, let's figure out, do we do a barbecue? Like, 
who can cook? Like, how, how do we get this done? And <laughs> pick a day, like, and have somebody look forward to it, right? So right. that's, I mean, that's the simplest thing you could possibly do, provide food on a day. Like, provide most food. of the time, most of the time, there's some budget dollars somewhere that you can provide food with. Do that bare minimum. I've done that. I've had colleagues do that in the past. It's been superb. Okay. I love the, and I, and I can give kudos to Bolt because I've been in some job trailers for Bolt like that have, have done this, but there are like kudos boards <laughs> where um, people literally just throw out stuff they're grateful for that other people are doing and you have a whole board just looking at it. Um, I love that. I have implemented that in different ways. Um, more so and like work, like I've been able to do team building workshops with teams and say, okay, yep, let's hold the football and say what you're thankful for, what that previous person did for you. Right. <laughs> Something as simple as yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Um, so back to making it safe and productive safe for me, again, that's based, that's based on means and methods. But if I'm walking through a job site, I have the responsibility to say when I see something that's unsafe. Um, where my previous, um, previous company I used to work at, there was a, there was a term they would say all the time. It's called don't walk by. If you see something, it's kind of like, if you see something, say something, but don't walk yeah. by something that you can say something about and make a change to make it better. Something as simple as an extension cord going across your walkway. If you see a ladder put in a way that's unsafe. If there's a way that you can tie off, tie, have your tools tied onto your belt, whatever it is, making sure that people are working ergonomically. Is there, um, are they bending over a ridiculous amount of times? How do you make sure that they don't do like repetitive activities in a way where it's going to hurt them long term? Like, how can you make things accessible to them really nearby? Those are the kinds of things. If you think about how you lay out a job site, I ask questions all the time to my contractors. Okay, how are you laying, laying out this job site? Where are you putting the materials so that when this work needs to happen, that the people, the trades who are gonna actually be using them, these materials, they're gonna have it most accessible to them. So I ask those questions and they're all like, oh yeah, we'll take care of it. A lot of times they'll do, but when I walk through the site, I always say things and point things out and you know, unfortunately, fortunately, I wear the white hat in construction. For, so most of the time, people do listen to me. Yes, hard hat. Like, not to be confused for an intern. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so that being said, that's how I do it. Uh, and then I, uh, let's scale it all the way back up, right? When I procure a project, I really, really care about making sure that I invite the right invite just in the invitation stage right. people that have a good track record on treating people well respecting people working collaboratively having a good um reputation with the trades because guess what when you're productive and when you're safe on site the trades always want to work back with that gc again absolutely right and if they get paid right. on time like everything works right like you gotta look. You gotta look at the entire picture and understand from all the different perspectives. Like, how do we best work together? So I listen and I hear. Like, okay, well, what kind of culture do I want to embark on for this project? I answer those questions even before I invite folks to the um, to be designers on the project, to be consultants, whatever GCs, everything. So I from then I'm thinking about respect for people, and that's to me, a cascade effect to, to doing exactly what you're asking about. That's beautiful. And in that uh, production mindset, like I know Doug's experience, it's very aligned with mine and yours, Brittany. Well, what tidbits can we give to people that they might be newer to lean construction? What's the first thing that they can implement on their jobs on Monday? Mm. What do you think is the easy first thing like where you got started? Just keep a clean job site. Just make it clean. Just clean it up, people. Just get it clean. clean. Yeah. Just get it clean. Look for the look for the waste. You know? Just look for the five waste. Like to me, if you just look around 
and see is something being wasted? Is somebody walking around too much? How many steps, how can you reduce the amount of steps somebody takes walking back and forth? How, I mean, how can you reduce the quantity of materials that you're ordering so that you don't have to like, deal with figure, it. Right, right? Like just deal with the extra stuff, right? Yeah. Like the, if you look for ways to reduce overproduction, overuse of like all of that is a very easy way to make things safe, make things more productive. Yes, it takes a little thinking beforehand. But when you want to be efficient on the job site, hands down. That to Absolutely. me is, is, yeah. I love that. And people listening on the live and on the replay, what are some ways that you started with lean construction on your projects? I want to hear from you uh, out there listening and uh, drop it in the comments and the chats. And if you got a story to share of how the first time you implemented some lean on your projects, you could inspire that next person to catch the bug and become a change maker like us. So share your story in the comments and we will definitely interact and engage with that. And, and you just never know who's watching. And I think I want to highlight Brittany, you know, of all the things you were talking about, we've shared and my goodness, the time has flown. You have been just such an inspiration with the type of questions you ask your wit and your ability to perceive and discern I think is top notch. Dan Fauché was right. You're a star. That's <laughs> all. So, I'm glad <laughs> Thanks, he said Dan. that. Yeah. Dan, you're awesome. And that's like where I got started. Like my first thing was I read a book and then I had luckily conditions where Dan Fauché ended up on my job. And I got to learn from somebody that had walked in these lean shoes for quite a while and partnered and then got to experiment myself with different things. So I want to encourage everybody to go out there and build and experiment and ask a lot of questions like Brittany, ask a lot of questions and, and ask people with real curiosity. Don't end up on a, on a TV show where the judge has to have the opposing lawyer get objected because you're leading the witness, like ask with humble inquiry and curiosity. I mean, that's key. Like, seriously, like literally I give me like, tell my mom used to say this and that's not the right way to ask it, but like, tell me like I'm a two year old, like literally walk me through this as though I have no clue what you're talking about. And just give me like literally just the structure of what you were thinking, why you were choosing to do this, like as, as though I have no context. And that's when you start to learn things. Absolutely. That's the way it's done. Open your mind, ask questions, look around, walk your job sites, talk to your designers, get curious about their processes, make friends with an owner. <laughs> and then look at technology too, to make your life easier. People it's all about easier, better, faster for construction. That's the name of the game. That's the show. We love all of you for tuning in spending your time with us. Brittany, what's the last thing you want people to be thinking about as they head into the weekend? Oh, man. Okay, well, we have Thanksgiving coming up. And a lot of times people just think about turkey and all the time that they'll be spending with family, whether you want to or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> thankfully, I enjoy time with family, so I'm very much looking forward to that. But back to just being grateful. Right. Um, I would say I did a series on just gratefulness um, some time ago. And that's, I mean, we rounded this out from a mental health standpoint, respect for people standpoint, even just technology, right? Like there is a, um, a mindset that really shifts your thinking when you're going through it. If you literally, literally just start writing down or just going through your head, the things, they could be really small. The things that you're grateful for, like, could be the air that we breathe. Could be the good lighting, right? Like, that yeah. is in your home. Could be the heat. I mean, it's snowing outside right now here in Madison. At least it was right before we got started. Like, the heat in your home. Like, there are so many people who wouldn't be able to say that they have those things readily available to them you are you are so fortunate and then much less you have amazing people to listen to 
right? Like Felipe on the EBFC show, right? Like you have people, you have resources available to you. You have people that you work with, whether you've tapped into those resources or not. You have people that you work with that you can learn from. I mean, just remember that as you go into the weekend, cherish the things that you have. And man, life will just be better. Better. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. Wave goodbye, Brittany. Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. much for inviting me. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Felipe. You are so welcome. People, keep those comments alive. We want to hear your lean construction implementation stories. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Very special thanks to my guest. I'm Felipe Engineer Manriquez. The EBFC show is created by Felipe and produced by a passion to build easier and better. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. Let's go build. <laughs>